Hey bees, I'm Marie from Hubble Bee and Me, and today we are continuing our almond oat theme with an almond oat powder to foam facial cleanser. When you first look at this formulation, it just kind of looks like a powder, right? Like a, a sort of slightly creamy beige-ish powder, nothing too exciting. But when you get it wet and work it up between your palms, it transforms into foam or lovely lather. Uh, so that's kind of the powder to foam Thing in the name and it does sound very kind of fancy and sort of magic but it's really not <laughs> the reason this powder to foam magic happens is because the formulation includes some dry powdered surfactants so it is you know dry and powdered and it just blends nicely into the rest of the powder but then when it gets wet and you know agitated Voila! Lather! The bulk of this cleanser is a blend of white kale and clay and colloidal oatmeal. If you don't have white kale and clay, you could use a different soft clay, but I do want to outline some of the reasons I chose white kale and clay. Uh, one, it is inexpensive and pretty readily available. Two, it is a nice soft clay and when it gets wet it just gets nice and like creamy and rich. Uh, and then kind of the last reason is that it doesn't make a big mess because it is white. I've made scrubs like this in the past where I got really excited about using something like a French red clay. Uh, and if you use a lot of like a colorful clay in one of these uh, products, you end up making a really big mess in your bathroom every time you use it, or at least I do. Maybe you are like far more together uh, than I am. But yeah, I just kind of found that there was just like red splatter marks all over my previously nice white sink. Uh, so I've sort of started making these types of products with much paler colors uh, after cleaning my sink a bunch of times because it's just, what a pain in the backside. So if you're going to choose a different clay, choose something that has a fairly pale color, choose something that is quite soft. So I don't recommend using bentonite or rasool. They're a lot sandier and react differently when they get wet than uh, kaolin does. Actually, I have a whole video on sort of kaolin and bentonite side by side. So if you wanna kind of see how different they are. And yeah, choose something that's not gonna make a huge visual mess in your sink if I guess that's something that you care about. <laughs> I've included some rolled oats in this formulation as well. And we are blending everything together in a coffee grinder. So um, you're not really going to be able to you know, see them in the final product. They go from rolled to completely blitzed, but you will be able to feel that a little bit in the, uh, in the use of the product, a little bit of light physical exfoliation. If you would like to make the product scrubbier, you know, you can tip the balance, choose more of the rolled oats and less colloidal oats. Uh, and if you'd like it to be less scrubby, use more colloidal oats and less rolled oats. The almond part of this formulation comes from some sweet almond oil. And so the oil helps weigh the formulation down a bit. So it doesn't just kind of every time you use it, you don't get this big floaty mess which you really especially don't want because of the surfactant. Inhaling kind of powdered surfactant, oh, it's unbelievably unpleasant kind of getting this like powdered sudsy bit in like the back of your airways. Oh, it's awful. So we will be wearing a dust mask as we blend this all together. But once that oil is blended in there, and then of course, once we're not you know, aggressively whipping the formulation up in a coffee grinder, uh, it does settle down very nicely so you can use it without getting a really unpleasant airway full of sodium cocoa lysocyanate, which is our surfactant. If you would like to learn more about this formulation, including information on substitution, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the, all the ingredients, and more jazz hands, make sure you're reading the partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. There's always heaps more awesome sauce information in the partner blog post for my formulations that I share here on YouTube. But yeah, um, let's go get all powder to foamy. <laughs> We're going to begin by combining our powdered ingredients in a small beaker, and it doesn't have to be a beaker, just kind of any sort of container or bowl that you can combine everything in and then transfer it to your coffee grinder relatively easily. So I'm sure you'll feel confident choosing something once you've sort of seen how this all goes down in the full video. So our first ingredient is white kale and clay, and you're going to need 17.85 grams of this. If you would like to mix up the clay blend a bit, you can. So just make sure you're reading the partner blog post on that linked in the description box below. You'll need four and a half grams of colloidal oatmeal, one and a half grams of oats. So these are I think, sort of partially rolled steel cut oats. 
They're not straight rolled oats, but they're not straight steel cut either, but really just use whatever oats you have. And then our last powdered ingredient is our surfactant, the sodium cocal isothionate at four and a half grams. Uh, and before I agitate this, I'm going to put on my dust mask because inhaling powdered surfactants is unbelievably unpleasant. All right, so I'm gonna leave my dust mask on for this next part. We're going to be weighing in our liquid ingredients into the powders. I've stirred them up a little bit. It doesn't really matter because we are gonna be blending everything. So I've got this on the scale and we have sweet almond oil and vitamin E. I'm going to be scattering one and a half grams of this sweet almond oil over the surface of the powders. And then we'll do the vitamin E next. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a shimmy to try and keep the um, little drops sort of encapsulated by powders. So when we go to transfer this to the coffee grinder, is as cooperative as possible. And we'll need 0 0.15 grams vitamin E. And so here is my DIY only coffee grinder. I only use it for DIY things and we're going to transfer our powdered mixture into here. And it looks like my efforts to kind of keep the liquid oils just wrapped up in a bit of powder work reasonably well. I got a breakthrough there and there, but for the most part, the mixture is kind of dumped out without us getting like oily smudges that stuff stuck to on the inside of the beaker. So our next step is grinding this up. So I've got a piece of cling film here, putting on over top. And so this will really reduce the volume of the grinder and make for a much sort of faster and more even blend. Just gonna gently snug that down and off we go. So I like to stop partway through grinding and whack the grinder with the back of a spoon to knock powders down and help everything incorporate. take my dust mask off now. So this is looking great. And I took my dust mask off because when I pulled the lid of the coffee grinder up, we didn't see any powder kind of going poof. So the oils have been thoroughly incorporated and this isn't really floaty anymore. And the oils help weigh it down, which is great. This is literally it. So now we're gonna package it up. So for packaging, I'm using this super cute paperboard container that has a sifter like shaker top. So this was a gift from Yellow Bee. This is a new product of theirs. So we'll just wiggle that out and we can fill that. So this is a two ounce one and this is roughly a one ounce batch, but I find that it's a pretty perfect fit. So there you can see it's got a, a protective plastic shield on there, little holes. So something to note after we fill this or after you're filling this, um, throughout use you know if you just kind of push it in like that and then you're doing this to uh, dispense the product if there's weight behind it I have learned this the hard way this will pop out and then a bunch of product will come with it so you may wish to apply a small amount of glue to uh, keep it in place or perhaps a wee bit of tape you know sort of over the edges to, to hold it in place because yeah, I've ended up with sort of a big palm full of product like that before, which was not super ideal. Um, so yeah, just, just a thing, <laughs> thing to consider. And for a bit of a use demo, we'll grab a product here. So this is one that's kind of been living in my bathroom and testing for a while. It immediately feels wonderfully creamy, thanks to all that lovely soft clay. You can see we've got some gorgeous bubbles here. It is not a super high lather product, especially if you use less of the powder than I did. I can feel a wee touch of scrubbiness from the oats, but it's definitely not an aggressive exfoliant. I would say that this is gentle enough to use as a twice a day cleanser for, at least for me, uh, obviously listen to your skin and do whatever makes your skin happy. And there we go. 
so we just made a beautiful gentle almond oat powder to foam facial cleanser thank you so much for watching please subscribe and please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video you'll find a ton of great information down there including information on substitutions scaling shelf life links to places to buy all the ingredients links to where to buy this really neat package and a whole lot more but yeah thank you so very much and i'll see you next time